In tonight's cover story, Chicago's deadly skyline. Thousands of migrating birds are killed each year by flying into the city's glass buildings. That's more than anywhere else in the U.S. Experts say there are ways to make Chicago safer for birds. WGN's Aaron McElroy reports the challenge is getting the city to implement those changes. Six months ago, nearly a thousand dead birds were found outside one Chicago building. It was a scene few will ever forget, a preventable tragedy that could easily play out in Chicago once again. Chicago's famous skyline, renowned for its modern architecture and sweeping lakefront, carries another reputation, one that became glaringly apparent on the morning of October 5th, 2023. I got to the top of the stairs to start and saw a carpet of birds like nothing I'd ever seen before. We picked up another 2,000 or more downtown, and they were bringing us bags full of dead birds off of their rooftops. Chicago was found to be the most dangerous city for migrating birds in the country. In a single day, more than 3,000 birds died after flying into a death trap of shiny glass boxes that makes up Chicago's skyline. For a city of millions, it was a devastating lesson about Chicago's role. Most unaware that in the dark of night, there's a dense path of birds migrating overhead from far reaching corners of the earth. We'll have nights that there could be upwards of 200 million birds that'll pass through this region. Radar from Cornell's lab of ornithology picks up the sheer numbers of migrating birds that use this ancient route that takes them directly through Chicago every spring and fall. We're talking birds that have spent most of their time in you know, the, the central Andes of Colombia, of Ecuador, of uh, the lowlands in Brazil. So it's an epic journey of thousands of miles that is unfortunately gonna end here in, on the streets of the city of Chicago. These are some of the rarer ones that have hit some of the buildings in Chicago. Dave Willard from Chicago's Field Museum has been archiving the carnage for more than 40 years. Many different species that have run into windows in the Chicago area. It was Willard who first discovered the shocking piles of birds on the ground outside McCormick Place early that October morning. The buildings that might have thought it was trivial realized that there's something that needs to be done. Our city motto is Herbs and Hortos, City in a Garden. We can't have a garden if you're just slaughtering the wildlife that sustains that garden left and right. Architect and former president of Chicago's Ornithological Society, Carl Giametti, says the problem isn't coming up with bird-friendly building designs, but the city's will to implement them. The city has the ability to set their own policy for projects that go through the Department of Planning and Development. And so this is something that, if the will was there, could happen very quickly in a matter of weeks. On Monday, Chicago's Department of Planning and Development released its latest proposed construction guidelines, bulking up the current point system for developers that adhere to bird-friendly design. We wanted the Department of Planning to take bird safety guidelines much more seriously. A proposal without enough teeth for Second Ward Alderman Brian Hopkins. That needs to go beyond just suggestions and guidelines. It needs to have the force of law. Hopkins introduced a bird-friendly building ordinance that passed through City Hall in 2020, yet he says it was largely ignored by the city's planning and development department. Allowing the hum of cranes to continue, erecting more glass fortresses along Chicago's lakefront. Every year we get more and more glass high rises put up down here and that means birds are going to be hitting those buildings for generations. In recent years, other large cities like New York and San Francisco have successfully implemented bird friendly laws that require developers to use patterned glass, netting and decorative features to prevent bird strikes. That's the thing. That's the thing about it. It's achievable to, to make a building safer for birds and it's only the will to do it that's missing. We can call ourselves a green city, but you know, back it up with the proper legislation to then protect those animals. It's kind of, I would say, you know, false advertising. As CEO of MPEA, I do take this seriously. After 10,000 people signed a petition demanding action, McCormick Place made some changes. We have taken measures. I'll address that in my report. 
pulling their shades, adding window decals, and turning off the lights at night so it won't draw birds to their two football fields worth of glass lining the lakefront. But Giametti says it will take more than one to change Chicago's reputation. That was just one building on one night. The thousands of birds have been happening uh, every single year for years now, for decades. According to the Chicago Bird Alliance, more than 10,000 migratory birds die in Chicago every year, a morbid toll of nearly half a million over the last 50 years. And we know that's the tip of an iceberg. It, it could be, you know, 10 times that. You can tell he flew into glass and just kind of destroyed the tip of his beak. The majority of these birds die from massive head trauma. Every morning, Prince and her team of collision monitors collect the aftermath found on Chicago's downtown streets. Uh, by the time most people get downtown, 9, 10 o'clock in the morning, these birds are gone. Unfortunately, a, a little yellow-bellied sapsucker. So by being out there, we're bearing witness to what's happening. You could see he was sitting with his head tucked after he'd hit the glass. Those with any sign of life are brought here to the Willowbrook Wildlife Center. Many, like this American woodcock, end up being euthanized due to their severe injuries. They need two eyes to be able to be released. We're looking for any fracture. The lucky ones are treated and released. We're on the cusp of major spring migration over the next seven weeks. We know that there's probably going to be thousands and thousands of birds in that time that are going to perish uh, in the streets of Chicago. A little guy like this will have flown here from the southern U.S. or the Caribbean. Almost made it up to nesting grounds. We are killing birds that are citizens of the world, and these birds belong to the entire planet. It's something that's going to impact the perhaps collapse of other ecosystems. Driving Prince and others to press on as a voice for the songbirds that lost their lives to the city in a garden. The best time to build a bird-friendly building was 50 years ago when bird populations were much larger. The next best time is today. We did reach out to the city's Department of Planning and Development, and while they would not comment or do an interview for us on camera, there is an opportunity for the public to weigh in, and it will be this Thursday at 10 a.m. in City Council Chambers. Aaron McElroy, WGN News.